why visiting will help you get into America's most selective colleges and universities, even if those colleges and universities do not track demonstrated interest. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. For those who don't know, the term demonstrated interest is in reference to what students are doing when they are outwardly showing interest in a particular college or university. There are a relative handful of colleges in the United States that track demonstrated interest, i.e. track when students show interest in them. Uh, so for instance, like if a student visits some colleges, if they track demonstrated interest, will uh, make a note in the file, the electronic file, of course, uh, that the student visited. And those colleges that do track demonstrated interest for purposes of college admissions decisions, when they're making the decision, they often will look at, well, how many times has this student demonstrated interest in our university or our college? And that could weigh positively on your chances of getting into that college or university. Now, the thing is this more colleges consider demonstrated interest 25 years ago than do today. Uh, this is because of a lot of different social factors in the United States and the way the winds are blowing. They basically have done away with tracking demonstrated interest because the thinking went that not all students could actually afford to visit campus or interact with a college admissions officer from a particular college or university. So the colleges and universities in the name of equity and uh, fairness in their minds have said, well, you know what, more and more colleges at least have said, we're not going to track demonstrated interest because we don't want to give a leg up to students who come to campus because that means they're rich, which means that we're favoring rich people, so on and so forth. So you may be saying, Craig, why are you doing this video? Because if fewer and fewer colleges than ever before are tracking a student's demonstrate interest, then how will visiting a college campus help me get into a selective college or university? Well, here's why. Even if a college does not track demonstrated interest, by visiting myriad colleges, but particularly the colleges on the top half of your list, or at the very least, the top third of your list, you are going to be so much more knowledgeable about those colleges. And as a result, you're going to do a better job crafting messaging on your application for why you feel as though you would be a good fit for that school and that could, that school is a good fit for you as a result of having, having actually been on the ground as an eyewitness to life on that campus for two hours minimum when you do a torn information session. Uh, then if you have never visited that college campus or that state that the college campus is in and it's all just very theoretical and all very, very abstract based off what you've learned online, uh, and so I strongly recommend visiting. You know this because I've done other videos about it in the past. If you're interested in those other videos, you can, of course, find those videos in my back catalog. But the reason I'm bringing this up today is because I've recently have released an assessment. And you can find it and complete it for free at areyouontracktogetin.com, which helps you answer that very question as it relates to highly selective colleges and universities in the United States. And one of the inquiries on that assessment is, have you visited colleges on your list? And particularly the selective or top colleges on your list. I think the actual wording of that question on the student version of the assessment is, I have participated in official tours and attended official information sessions on a minimum of five different college campuses, including at my top choice colleges and you have to respond either yes or no. And the reason I'm asking that question or I'm posing that inquiry or prompt for you to say yes or no to is because I want to be sure that you are actually getting face-to-face, up-close-and-personal understanding of various colleges on your list, particularly the top colleges on your list, because you're going to, again, make a much more compelling case for admission if you've done that. Now, again, I do recognize that not everyone can afford to come to campus in Massachusetts if they live in Perth, Australia, or in Bangalore, India, 
or in Budapest, Hungary. I completely understand, completely understand. I highly recommend you do a virtual tour and or information session at the very least if you find yourself in a position like that, even if you are located in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and you just can't get up to a highly selective college or university to visit, that's okay. At least do an information session and tour online. But I still argue that you are going to be in the very best position to create a carefully curated college list for yourself as well as seal the deal and actually get in to some of these colleges on your list if you have visited a number of colleges and ideally uh, uh, the top colleges and or the most selective colleges on your list because the, the things you learn on a college campus tour are not just the objective facts that you can of course also learn online but when you're sitting in an information session held by an admissions officer or you're going on a student-led tour which is the minimum of what you should do on a college campus when you come to visit it you can also do a lot of other things and i talk about that in other videos but what i will say is when you do that you you don't just glean information about you know the the size of the campus you also glean or factual information about how many majors there are again all that information you can find online but you also get a sense of the the flavor of the campus, the value system of the people around you on campus, the idiosyncrasies of that particular campus and the students who go there. And you pick up on things like scents and tastes and feelings and vibes and values. I mean, these are sort of intangible things and not just, you know, the five key senses. So this is important for you to be able to infuse later down the line when you're completing essays, let's say for Georgetown or for MIT or the UCs or any of the common app schools that have supplemental essay questions that are highly selective colleges, you're going to be able to speak from a much better position of authority about why you feel like you're a strong fit for that school and why that school is a strong fit for you. Even if you get a question like, why do you want to major in business at College X and you've applied now to College X, you're going to probably learn more about business at College X by actually visiting the campus in both objective and subjective ways than you would just by doing an encyclopedic review of information online about business at College X. So that is why I ask this question on my are you on track to get in dot com assessment, which again, I strongly encourage whether you're a student or a parent that you complete. It takes three minutes, it's free, and you get your results emailed directly to you. And this assessment will help you answer the question, are you or are, is your student on track to get into a highly selective college or university in the United States? It doesn't mean you're going to definitely get in if you get great results. It means that you're on track to have a real shot of getting in. Now, there are no guarantees in highly selective college admissions world these days. I mean, there are colleges that are accepting 5% or fewer, basically, of applicants, depending on the admission cycle. So... You know, it's extremely hard to get into very selective colleges in the United States. However, you should know, eyes wide open, for yourself or your student, if you're even in the right zip code or even in the right neighborhood for being on track, <laughs> for potentially, maybe, getting in. And there are many, many very earnest and well-meaning and smart students and parents who think they are on track to get in, but really, objectively speaking, they have no shot because of the way in which the selective college admissions process works in the United States, uh, there are things that you need to get in, in order and soon, ideally, for you to have any shot of admission. You'd like to get your ducks in a row, is what I would say, as early in your high school career as possible. And uh, that's sometimes really hard to do for anyone, but especially it's hard to do if you really don't have your ducks in a row and it's already 11th grade year. You probably should know that now so you don't misallocate your resources when applying to different colleges and universities a couple months from now when it comes time to apply. So you get the point. I encourage you to take that free assessment at areyouontracktogetin.com. Uh, again, it's completely free and it will help you figure out if this is a massive reach for you or if it's a realistic reach for you. But in both cases, they're reaches, right? Because they're Ivies or they're selective schools in the United States. And this is not uh, a game for individuals who are weak of heart or weak of mind. This is going to 
be something that to get into any highly selective college or university in the United States, and when I'm talking about highly selective, I'm talking about schools that basically accept fewer than 25% of applicants, you have to thread a very fine needle or thread a very fine needle in order to get in. Um, so you want to know going in if you're even in the right in the right time zone or zip code or whatever. So go to are you on track to get in.com. But getting back to the main topic of this video, which is I believe so strongly in the power of visiting, one of the questions on the assessment ask you that very question, have you visited? Because I believe those students who are on, on the best trajectory for giving themselves the best shot of getting into a highly selective college or university have visited diversity of schools in the United States and particularly their top, let's say, third to half of schools on their list because they're going to learn so much more about the schools and what makes those schools tick, if you will, than they do just by looking online. Now, again, if you can't visit in person, don't freak out. You may not have the time or money to get to those campuses. At least do as many different virtual tours, information sessions as you can. Maybe a college admissions officer from that particular college or university is coming to visit your high school in Bangalore or Budapest or what was the other city? Oh, Perth. I said Perth. Um, believe it or not, some of these very selective schools do send admissions officers out around the world to visit local communities and local high schools, even whether it be during the school day or maybe at night in your community. So definitely check in on that because that's another way to connect and learn from directly an individual who knows a heck of a lot about the admissions process and the overall school, even if you can't make it to campus. But I still say there's nothing that beats a campus visit. I go so far as to say that there is no such thing as a wasted college visit. You could go to a college and hate every second of your time on that campus for two and a half hours. That is still not a wasted experience. You learned everything you hate about a college by going to a college that you hate. So I'm a big fan of going to all different types of colleges, large, small, near, far, big and small, because you may learn more about yourself and your value system and your goals and your priorities and your preferences as it relates to colleges, by going on a lot of college visits than you will ever learn just by thinking about the prospect of college at home. And it's not real though until you're on a real college campus. So I strongly recommend visiting. And of course, if you want help developing your bespoke college list with safeties, possibles, and reaches that all resonate with you, I strongly recommend that you work with me one-on-one -on -one for at least that part of the college admissions process. Go to my website, collegemeister.com to learn how you can work with me and start developing or maybe finish developing your college list. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.